Welcome in, everybody. Another episode of the First and Orange podcast. Parker Gabriel here, Ryan McFadden over there, Denver Post, Broncos reporters. Coming to you, it's Tuesday, October 24th. Denver Broncos, strangely enough. Ryan, fresh off a win, 19 to 17 against the Green Bay Packers, just like we expected, right? Yep. Was, was, wasn't pretty, but they got the job done first one in, in power field. And, you know, Sean Payne's uh, ID message of, you know, the last year Detroit Lions team, this is, I guess this is the way this, the start it. Uh, I, that's what he's been talking about. He talked about that a lot last week and just trying to get stack up wins and try to get the ball rolling. And maybe, maybe this, they could be the, this version this year. Who knows? But uh, I think getting that win against Green Bay, a winnable opponent at, at home, I think, I think that's huge. Uh, because if it went the other way around, I think with this podcast will have a much darker theme to it. Yeah, we'd be talking about about the trade deadline activity. I, I, actually, I don't know about that. I think, you know, we'll see what happens over the next week. But definitely it's one of those situations, Ryan, where it's like you don't I don't you never don't ever want to discount a team for winning a game in the NFL. Right. I mean, Green Bay is not very good. Um, they're probably in somewhat of a similar position. Obviously, they're young not maybe young, but inexperienced at quarterback. They've got a young offense. Um, even still, like Denver's lost three games at home before that to teams that also aren't particularly good in, in Vegas, Washington. Um, and then the Jets, the Jets are probably the best team out of out of that group. So it's one of those where it's like, okay, you know, you got to win. Great. Um, you know, sort of talk to me when you beat the Chiefs um, or the Bills after the bye week on Monday Night Football. At the same time, like, as uh, it's unlikely. Like, I just want to say that up front. Like, it's extremely unlikely that they're going to make a run and actually make the postseason. Like, their odds right now are are at one percent, um, based on depending on the sort of like model you look at or whatever. If they beat Kansas City, it'll go all the way up to like four percent. So it's a there's a long way to go. And saying like, is this the start of a big run? I mean, it's probably just too early to even really entertain that, especially when you're going into a stretch where you're about to play a team on Sunday in Kansas city that, you know, you haven't beat in several years at the same time though, like you can't get on a winning streak without it starting somewhere. And so at the very least they got to win. Maybe a few people were mad. Kiz was mad. Uh, you know, he wrote like they can't even, they can't even lose a must lose game, um, which totally, you know, you're talking about draft, draft stock and all that like there there's maybe some validity to that um mostly from fans though i think the response um that we saw was you know don't tank and and try to get it done and and um you know so step one complete yes yeah that's that's step one um and like you say you hit the point there like i know i know sean Payne brought up the like a few times detroit lions from last year but it, that's it's 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 easier said than done in a sense, but like but they did they get they got the first step beating Green Bay. Now they got to do something they have not done in years and beat the Chiefs, which is you know going against anytime you're going against Patrick, Patrick Mahomes, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Um, that's that's a hard task. Yep. And then after that, you're coming off the bye week and you had to play Josh Allen and, and the Buffalo Bills. So we'll see, but. Just the, I think for them, just to finally say we finally won a game at home and we finally beat uh, a team that going into that matchup that we should beat. I think that's you, you that I think that's a good step for them. But it's going to be interesting to see how things play out moving forward. Yeah, no doubt. So two and five now. It's interesting. There were I think four teams that went into this past weekend uh, with one win that ended up winning. It was the it was sort of the week of the upset in the NFL. Uh, New England won, Denver won. Uh, There's a couple other one-win teams. Arizona didn't, um, but there was there was four of them uh, that all won games. The Giants won, and uh, somebody else too that I'm not remembering now off the top of my head. So it's um it was just one of those weeks that happens in the NFL. It's it's truly the league of you know any week any team essentially. Um, can lose. And and the other part of it is like, you do see teams every year that start slow and then make a run. Like, like Sean Payton's talked a lot about the Lions last year who started one and six. They didn't make the playoffs, they ended up a game short. 
um, but they were in it until the last week of the season. I mean, funny enough, Ryan, like the Broncos firsthand saw one of the teams that got hot and made a run. They beat Jacksonville uh, in London, the Broncos did, going into their bye week. That got the Broncos to three and five, and it dropped Jacksonville to two and six. Um, and then Jacksonville ended up, you know, winning the division. Um, they got really hot uh, down the stretch. Trevor Lawrence played great, and away you go. So, like, impossible? Um, no. Likely? Also no. Um, and it puts – I don't know. I mean, it, it maybe adds just like a, a slight layer of interest to what happens, at the uh, you know, coming up to the trade deadline here, which maybe is the next thing we talk about. Like, the trade deadline is a week from today. We're recording this on Tuesday, um, October 31st. So you're going to have the Kansas City game – um, in the books, obviously, by the time the actual deadline arrives. And I think it will be interesting to see. We've sort of gathered, you know, over the past week or so, a couple weeks, that this isn't going to be, pro- I mean, probably not going to be like a full on fire sale. You know, it's not like, I don't think they're going where it's like anything that's not nailed down must go. Um, they could, it doesn't seem like that's the way it's going. Um, but you know, obviously more likely to be sellers than buyers. So you just wonder the combination of like the value you get at the deadline. And then also like maybe on the off chance that you do beat Kansas city, like does your, does your thought process about the deadline, you know, change at all in the next seven days? Yeah, I think I, like you, like you said, I don't think it's going to be, if they do become, uh, if they do decide to be sellers, I don't think it's going to be a, a huge fire sell like a lot of fans want so they can get a higher pick um, because at the end of the day, you're still going to have to build a competitive team because you're just not going to just go out there and lose games. That, that's you're, that's not just going to happen. So it's hard to say, all right, we're going to just sell, like everyone just go, Judy go, Sutton go, um, Simmons go, um, Josie go. I, I that just That's not going to happen. Um, but I think if they beat Kansas City, I think it's going to probably change um, how they approach it big time because it might be a situation where, all right, let's say they beat Kansas City and the defense once again has a solid performance, right? Do You might say, all right, forget it. Like, we're keeping Justin Simmons because if we can – because since he's been back and been healthy, I, like our defenses look solid. And if we're going to try to make some kind of run, we're going to need him. So. You know, maybe it could be something like that where it doesn't change. It might change who like they're willing to give up at the deadline. So let's say right now, yeah, we think someone like, and I'm just, I'm just thinking, just throwing it out there. But if let's say right now, Justin Simmons seems like a guy that they're more than likely to get traded at the deadline. If they beat Kansas City, they might say, hold on, we're not going to let him go. Or yeah. if we do, you better give us more than, what you originally offered. So I think it's going to be interesting. I think that Kansas City game is going to be really big because coming out the bye week three and five compared to two and six, you kind of look at things a little bit differently because you're kind of like you're starting to build that momentum. And Sean Payne looks like the type of guy like if he if he got that momentum going, I don't think he wants to slow down. Yeah. So especially for a guy who really went into the season and said, I'm going to be pissed if we don't make the playoffs. So <laughs> And right now, like you, you, it is less than likely they're going to make the playoffs. But if he gains some kind of momentum, it's hard. It, to me, I think it's hard to go up to him and say, "Hey, um, look, I know you just won two straight games, and we're, you're feeling good, really good about the team right now. But we're about to just shit one. We're about to send one of your top defensive guys somewhere else." Yeah, I, I don't think it's, it's. I would love this be in the room to hear that kind of <laughs> conversation. Yeah. With Sean Payton about that, especially for a guy uh, we know who is like, like he he got to win no matter what. So it's going to be inter- like, I think this is I think this game is going to be huge. Uh, but do I expect a full fire sale? So no. And if they beat and, and if they beat Kansas City, it's I, I had something tells me like I think their mindset is going to change just a bit if if they come way to come if they ended up going to the bio with a win against a divisional opponent yeah it's interesting because i mean i could definitely i could see that at the same time the other side of that equation is like you you either need to rebuild or you don't you know like you either 
you either think that this is a competitive core going forward or that it needs some work. And like the answer to that question, like, I don't know, are you operating with a lot of conviction? Like if the answer to a big picture question like that depends on the outcome of one game on Sunday. And so like, may, may and maybe if you're already leaning toward, we think we can get it done, generally speaking, with this group, right? Like, maybe if you if you think you're more likely to want to sign Josie Jewell after this year and and have him around for a couple more years with Alex Singleton, Andrew Sanders, then like, yeah, don't deal him. Um, you know, if you win on Sunday, but if you're in the if you're already in the mindset of like, you know, we think we need, we think we just that Drew Sanders needs experience. And we think that, you know, we're not sure if, if we want a guy who doesn't have any guaranteed money after this year, like Garrett Bowles, like his cap number is really big next year. We're leaning more toward trying to go young and cheap there rather than extending him um, or restructuring him after this season. Like all of those questions to me, for the most part, it's maybe not like lock, stock and barrel. Have they made a hard decision on all of those and all of those situations internally? but you at least have an idea probably. And Sean said this as much um, in the last couple of weeks that, you know, they have a vision of who they are right now. And they have a, a, he said, they think they have a pretty good handle on sort of like the bedrock of their roster for next year. And like, if those guys aren't part of the bedrock of your roster next year, you're not planning on that. Then I'm not sure that chasing the 1% ghost is like the, the rational way to go. But of course, like as a competitor, if you win on Sunday, you're going to be, you know, damn the torpedoes. Let's let's make a run at this thing. And so it's super interesting. And like, I think in a way, like had they lost to Green Bay, the draft conversation would have been more interesting. And then it would have been maybe like, I don't know, maybe going against my own logic here. But you you'd maybe think that the trade deadline was pretty much a foregone conclusion. Like, well, they're, they're one and six and they play Kansas city. Like, of course they're going to sell if they can. So there's all kinds of considerations, right? Like whether you went on Sunday, the longer term outlook for the roster, and then let's not forget like the type of value that maybe you get at the deadline too. Like Philadelphia gave up a fifth, a sixth and a, a player for, um, for uh, Kevin Bayard, the, the the safety from from Tennessee yesterday, like I don't know, man. If you're if you're using that, and Bayard has maybe you know lost a step over the last year or two, um, he's he's thirty. I mean, he's essentially you know similar age as Justin Simmons. Like, if that's what you're talking about, a fifth and a sixth, and a guy to fill a roster spot. I, I'm not. I'm just not sure that Denver is going to be running to take that deal for guys that are really good. You know, that are good players still, and and all of that. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe they'll feel the pressure to just add draft picks, um, sort of like regardless of where the value ends up in the next week. But that that one struck me as like not only was Philly a, a place, you know, a team that like pretty clearly needed a safety, but also like, oh, that's what they got for a guy that's been an All Pro twice, like. Uh, that's that doesn't strike me as like you're dealing at you know at peak value not not even close yeah and that's the thing like there's one thing to say hey let's just deal let's deal all these guys but at one thing and you know that's what a lot of that's what a lot of people on social media a lot of like fans are talking about like when whenever brock was lose it just deal everyone and, and do a fire sale but i think the thing people forget is what are you getting in return because if, like you mentioned, if you're just getting a bunch of, if you're getting a bunch of late round picks for Justin Simmons, um, I don't know how much that's going to, just send, shipping him away for a bunch of late rounders, how much that's going to, you know, change things as much. But, yeah, you hit the point. It, 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 Broncos are in an interesting situation because they can they can lose and, if they had a plan to sell, then they can ignite that plan. And if they win, there could be debates. Hey, should we stand pat and just like fight this thing through? But if you decide to like fight through this, how much does that? How much are, does that impact your future? 
Right. And I look at it like this is like, I, I was talking to Sean about this in the, in the press box. I, I made a point, like, let's say Denver makes the run, right? And they finish nine and eight, like the Lions, but don't get into the playoffs. Doing is that, doing that, is that worth it? And you have, you still kind of uncertain what the future is going to look like? Because right. if you have a chance to have more winning seasons down the road compared to just, you just went out the rest of the year and finished nine and eight, boom, and you just show, and you can just tell people, hey, look at us. We're, we're going to keep fighting. Right. I, don't, I, 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 I think this franchise at a point when you've missed the playoffs um, since Super Bowl 50 and haven't had a um, – haven't had a winning season since I was an undergrad in college. That yeah, but you're that, young, so that doesn't even. Help. <laughs> but yeah, that um, just trying to trying to like salvage the season and just try to do something like we saw last year with Detroit do. I don't know how like what to take away from that or how right. much that impacts what they what that does for you in the future. And I think that's the one thing the Broncos are look at. Yeah, we can try to salvage the season if we do, but what are the next three? two to three years are going to look like. So. Yeah. Yeah, no. So, okay. So that gets us to the, the, all of this. Like, this is why general managers and head coaches and personnel people, like this is the, this is the type of situation that you end up in where the ne- one, one line of thinking, it just, it's, it's related to um, and affected by so many other things. So like another piece of the longer term puzzle here is Russell Wilson. And, you know, we were this sort of have come up in conversation over the last week. We wrote about it um, at the end of last week into this weekend. The thing what, OK, so another Ryan, like, yeah, I think in general, if you ask me like, hey, you know, it's a coin flip. If you go nine and eight, it's a coin flip. It's actually, you know, probably less than 50, 50. I'll say 30, 35, 40 percent chance you make the playoffs. If you go nine and eight. So is it worth it? Like if you go nine and eight and and make a run? Well, the thing about the Lions last year is they were young, pretty young across the board. Like, obviously, Jared Goff's a veteran, but, like, at quarterback, but they had a lot of young players. And it was sort of that, like, this is the group that's going to do it next year. Um, and so far, outside of a uh, very poor outing against the Baltimore Ravens, a team you're familiar with, um, this last weekend, like, they've really been really good so far this year. And the thing about the Broncos is you just don't know, like, how much – is it a retool or is it a rebuild or is it just like a full on knockdown reconstruction of the roster after this year? And, you know, like, I don't think trading Randy Gregory and Frank Clark and releasing Frank Clark's like real indicative of one or the other, right? Like they like their depth at edge. They want to let those guys play. That's fine. But the quarterback does matter in this conversation and they have, a decision to make like sooner rather than later in March, they have to make a decision on if, if, if Russell Wilson's on the roster on March 17th um, next spring, not only is his 2024 salary guaranteed, that's already done. It's, it's guaranteed regardless of what happens, but his 2025 salary becomes guaranteed to a $37 million. So you're already in the scenario where basically the Broncos hands are going to be forced to, make the determination on whether they want Russ to be their guy for the next couple of years or not. And you can't say we're going to kind of go year by year and figure it out. Like this deadline is coming up and not only is it coming up, but they have to take into account the injury risk. Like if he were to go out on Sunday against Kansas city or after the bye week against Buffalo and he, you know, tore his ACL or he did his rotator cuff and he was, rehabbing long enough that he couldn't pass a physical in March, that 2025 money locks in, you can't cut an injured player. And so there's this like thing hanging in the air of like, is Russell going to be on the roster next year or not? And it's really not Ryan. It's not a question of like, is he worthy of being their starting quarterback right now? He's played fine for the most part. Like he's played good at times. He didn't play good against Kansas city, but like he's, he's fine. Like he's, they can win games with him. Um, but it's more about like, are you willing to take the risk that he's going to be on the roster two years from now? And that's a sort of like a gnarly tangled question in its own right. And so you just, it's sort of like, is it worth going nine and eight and not making the playoffs? Well, sure. If 
you're building around Russ and this is the foundation of what you're going to do. But if you have it in the back of your mind that like, he's probably not going to be here next year. We're going to get rid of some of these veteran guys. We're going to cut some money off the books because we got to take this huge dead money hit in getting rid of Russ. And it's a full hard reset. Then like, why keep guys to try to make a run to come up short and then get rid of all of them after the season? That would be sort of the, that would be the scenario that doesn't make sense. So all you got to do is answer the, you know, hundred million dollar question of like, are you building around Russ or are you moving on and sort of starting over after the season? And then that can guide you to the answer on the rest. Yeah. Like I think you hit all the points. It, I feel like at this point where whether no matter what happens on Sunday, I think that's where the mindset has to be here. Yeah. That's the mindset this organization has to take. What do we think the future is going to look like? I guess Sean Payne said he has an idea. Obviously, he's not going to just sit there and just tell us his whole vision. I was so um, surprised that he didn't just say, like, and here it is. Here's the vision for the roster next year. I, I'm assuming he's he's not going to be the guy to uh, say that unless you probably give him an extra latte or something like that. <laughs> um, but it's it's hard. It's, you you got to really sit there. Like, Do you feel like Russell Wilson is your quarterback in two years from now? Is yes. this is this Russell? Do you truly believe? Does Sean Payton truly believe this is his guy moving forward? And if that's the case, then I think you're, they're going to probably look at things differently. And then you have to look at, all right, is this the type of team we want to build around him? Yep. Um, it's just so many directions. And if he's not, if you're not sure, Russell will. To me, I think if Russell Wilson is, if you don't think Russell Wilson is in your two year plan, I think you're going to have to, have to make a decision here. Um, because you, you, you hit the point because if he gets hurt, then you guys are like, you, you're virtually, you're screwed. Yeah. Um, and then let's say, let's say they, they, they keep losing and boom, you're landing with Caleb Williams. How long would you want Caleb Williams to be back up to Russell Wilson? That's then you're going into basically like, let's say you get Caleb Williams right now. You're, you already going into that season. Um, that 2024 season, QB controversy. That will be the whole thing, whole discussion. Right? You won't write a story about anything else for like six no. months. QB controversy. Only You only get a different story until uh, a change is made. And after that, then you might get some freedom. But that's going to be the whole topic there. So it's, so you have to sit there and like, all right, do and, – and that's what you got to say. Like, is, I think that's where it's going to come down to. I think – for me, I think the biggest question with the Broncos – and moving forward, is Russell? Do you believe Russell Wilson is the guy? Yeah. For two years down the road, so we're looking two seasons from now. Is Russell Wilson still your guy? And to me, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, I I just don't know. Like Russell Wilson has played very played very well. Now I have to take it back. He has, he's played good. He's played really. He's played good a lot better from last year. He's had that that game against Kansas City was pretty bad. Uh, you, so you can't disregard that. But for the most part. He's shown he's a guy you can win games with. Uh, he's not. He hasn't been perfect. He hasn't been great. I mean, he has not been Seattle Russ, but he has shown he can be a guy to that can win games. And that comes to me is like, all right, he's, is that the type of guy you want to build around? Right. You just want to build around like just a guy who you know, or do you want to just bring in someone young and boom, let's start this and build the franchise around him? It just it's 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 tough. I'm glad I'm not. I'm glad I'm not a GM because I'll be up to like five in the morning trying to figure this stuff out, yeah. and I'll make the move that just probably get, that probably make me lose my job. <laughs> but but yeah, it's. I think is. I think it's going to come down to. I, I think when it comes down to this deadline and whatever decision they make moving forward, even in the offseason, do does Sean Payne believe Russell Wilson is the guy that can turn this thing around? Yeah, and. If he is, then I think we're looking at – I think the way the roster looks, probably his, we might be having a different conversation on how they approach things moving forward. And if he's not, then they're going to have to have conversations about Russ, even if he is he continues to play uh, decent. No doubt. Yeah, I think – and so just to put a bow on the conversation, I think there's a couple – there are a couple, you know, positions that they could they could trade from here going into the deadline. Um, and, and you could probably justify 
you know, sort of like regardless of the the much bigger picture, right? Like, you know, one of the inside, like just look at where they have high draft picks basically, right? I mean, they don't have a natural candidate at corner, even though they drafted Riley Moss in the third round because it just begs belief that they would actually trade Pat Sertan. I mean, getting rid of 23-year-old all pros that look like they're going to be perennial all pros is very rarely good business. Um, and then after, so after that, like receiver, yeah. Like if they dealt one of their receivers, you know, you could sort of see that regardless, especially with what Marvin Mims has showed in flash. It's been a quiet three weeks for him, but we've seen the big playability inside linebacker. I think you could make the same argument, you know, with Drew Sanders, obviously, if Drew Sanders plays a lot in the second half of the season, you're going to live with some mistakes and you're going to bank on it being, you know, good, good reps and and experience and all of that. So like there are moves and even like relatively big moves, you know, Josie Jules played his whole career here. Um, Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton, they've played their whole careers here. Judy obviously was a first round pick. Sutton was a second round pick. So like, you're not talking about minor things if they were to pull the trigger on it, on a deal like that, but that any of those I think are on a different, level than like Justin Simmons would be just like one of your really core foundational players for the last seven years. Um, so yeah, I mean, it would be, it's going to be fascinating to see what they do. Um, and then also it's going to be fascinating to see how this matchup with Kansas city shakes out because it's obviously been, you know, straight domination for whatever, seven, eight years. Um, you've got a unique matchup here. Let's just talk about for a minute before we get out here, Ryan. Um, Short week last time going into a Thursday game. And now like a week and a half later, you're starting prep for them again. You've got the whole week really going to sort of be a cat and mouse game. I think right between uh, Sean Payton and Steve Spagnuolo, the the defensive coordinator in Kansas city and between Andy Reid and, and Vance Joseph. And just in terms of like, you know who you are, you know, basically what your identity is. And also that the other team is very familiar because you just did it in your division rivals um, feels like a game where it's good to have the best player on the planet, um, like most weeks, but it'll be interesting to see how many wrinkles um, each side sort of tries to to throw at the other. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. Um, like la- last time they played 19, uh, 1908, I actually think Denver's off, even though Kansas City has been very, very good on defense, I think Denver's off is going to be slightly better. Um, overall compared to that Thursday night game, but it's then we're going to have a, it seems like we're going to have a pretty cold game as well. So this is right. It's going to be an interesting game. And to me, I think, I think the Broncos going to come out there with a lot more fire. Um, just because they're coming off a win is, and I feel like this team really wants to get that momentum going. You can kind of sense that in the locker room as well, that these guys really trying to get, they want to get the ball rolling. And I think it's good. I think I think it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting game overall. But like you said, I think it's gonna be like that chess match between uh, Sean and Steve, Vance and Andy. It's gonna it's gonna be fun to watch. Yeah, no doubt. So let's pick it. I there's like a very small part of me that's tempted. Like I, the the streak is it's got to end at some point. Like I don't think it can go on forever. But at the end of the day, like you just not. I just don't. I don't think that you can pick Denver. I mean. I, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if it was competitive. It has been, I mean, f- frankly, like the game on Thursday night was more lopsided in a lot of ways um, than either of the games last year. Last year, you know, one the game in Denver, Kansas City went up 28 nothing, and you thought it was headed toward like Miami Dolphins territory. Um, and then Denver came all the way back and, you know, got, got right, you know, close and it was close at Arrowhead. Um, so even though it ended up being nine points, um, you know, it felt like Kansas City was just like in control of that game a couple of weeks ago, um, almost the whole way. So, I mean, I think Kansas City will win. I, I tend to think it'll be competitive. Um, although, like when Mahomes, you know, if he puts 38 points on the board, you just you wouldn't be shocked, obviously. Um, I think I think Kansas City by a touchdown, 27 um, 20, a little bit more scoring than the last game. Uh, what do you say, Ryan? Um, I'm going, oh man, I'm going to go, I'm going to go 24, 
24-17 Kansas City. There you go. Which is a slug fest, huh? In the snow? Snug, sl slug fest in the snow at Empower Field. Say that five times fast. Yeah, I think I think it's gonna be close. I think Kansas City's going like you said, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna win by a touchdown, but I don't think I don't think Denver's office will play as bad as, as it did um in the first in the first matchup. That, that it was bad. I can't uh, I could be wrong, but I can't see them uh playing that bad, especially at home. There you go. One more game. It's against the Chiefs until the bye week. Uh, a lot of interest ahead. Obviously, trade deadline comes up Tuesday after that. We'll have all the coverage for you um, at denverpost.com slash Broncos um, from us, from our columnists, from everybody else involved in the operation over there at the Post. So uh, that's Ryan. I'm Parker. This has been the first in orange podcast kansas city on deck this weekend uh we got you covered for all of your broncos needs uh and until next week we'll talk to you later